One evening, I asked Bud to visit the Brooklyn Bridge. It was from there that the UFO abduction had been seen that night by one very important witness, the woman on the bridge. I'm standing at exactly the spot where this very strange event was seen on, at 3 a.m., really, on November 30th, 1989. A woman is driving from Brooklyn to New York, right down here in the outer lane. Her car engine died, the lights went out, and she looked over to this building, the one in the distance with a little pointed roof, and at that point, she saw a burst of light as a UFO hovering only a few feet above it, turned on all of its lights, and then from a window below, small ball-like figures rolled out. They unrolled in the bright light, and there was a woman in the middle with a long white nightgown, and two small figures below her and one above her. And they, the figures floated up into the UFO, and then the UFO changed its lights, zoomed out across the river and across the bridge and disappeared. And the woman's car lights and engine started back up again. But this is the way it started for her that night. That's the view she would have had right there. You can see individual windows clearly. You can see the size of the windows. Janet is a woman who wrote to me, uh, I got the letter in the fall of 1992, saying that she had witnessed uh, an, a UFO above a building and people floating out a window, uh, many stories off the ground, described exactly what um, I had gotten from Richard and Dan about they're seeing, they're watching uh, Linda's abduction. Finally called her up and uh, was astonished, of course, to get her. But she was a real person, and I was talking to a real voice, unlike Richard and Dan, who were still elusive. And um, I, I think it, I just sort of stumbled through this in almost disbelief. Bud had met Janet Kimball in person at a diner north of the city. I'd heard the audio tapes of their conversations, and Janet seemed quite credible. I was trying to understand what Bud believed was the most important UFO abduction case of the century. I became fascinated by Janet Kimball's crayon drawings. Her story of what she saw that night seemed to dovetail almost perfectly with the report Bud had received earlier from security agents Richard and Dan. So far as I'm concerned in terms of Janet's credibility, I would say she's 100% credible to me. I, I didn't see anything at any point, anything that would suggest she was exaggerating, that she was uh, hiding, that she was inventing. Every single thing, the emotion, the choice of language, uh, everything about what she told me was credible. There wasn't a, a tiny hint of anything wrong. When her car died that night, Janet's view was from the Brooklyn Bridge, much closer Richard, along with his two companions, had stalled just two blocks away from Linda's building. They were only two blocks away, and they were sitting under the FDR drive in their car, and they used um, binoculars. And uh, that's how they identified me, because they realized they knew what building and window that I came out of. The major players in the case were Linda Cortila and the two security agents, Richard and Dan, and the third man. The media soon identified the third man as Javier Perez de Cuellar, Secretary General of the United Nations. Bud met briefly with de Cuellar in an airport, but the man refused to discuss either the Linda case or UFOs in general. Bud never met either of the two security agents in person. Instead, they'd sent along many typed letters and audio tapes to support their story. My partner is very disoriented and embarrassed. This is what he said to me. Richard had also mailed Bud a set of his own crayon drawings of the event. I thought the similarities between his and Janet Kimball's drawings were striking. Maybe too striking. But it was the manila envelope that began to attract my attention. Janet's drawings had been sent to Bud in this ordinary padded envelope. But something was different here. And then I realized, all of the other letters and envelopes sent by witnesses, they'd all been typed. 
I didn't recall seeing a single piece of handwritten correspondence from the key witnesses, not until Janet Kimball's envelope. But one other person related to the case had written extensively to Bud by hand. I compared the two handwriting samples. At first, I was stunned. I'd had a few doubts and questions about the Linda case, but I hadn't expected this. Then I made some phone calls and went into action. I took along the handwriting samples and the drawings, including a couple of drawings that Bud had not included in the book witnessed. I left the drawings with a registered art appraiser and headed across town to meet Roger Rubin. Well, I am a question document examiner. I specialize particularly in question handwriting, which is to try to determine whether uh, handwriting is written by another person or not. And um, I've been accepted as an expert in uh, courts of a few different states and in um, arbitrations uh, 79 times. And this is over a period of 23 years. I was given the uh, handwriting uh, as known exemplars from a, a woman named Linda. And I have um, six or seven, pa seven pages of exemplars uh, in uh, her handwriting. And I was asked to compare it to the handwriting uh, on the large manila envelope and to determine whether or not it was written by the same person. The uh, first comparison is with the large letters, but the more telling comparison and the more revealing comparison is usually with the small letters because it is the small letters that shows the unconscious uh, writing of the individual. But uh, because large letters are interesting and uh, it's an easy starting place, I started by comparis comparing large letters. And the first large letter I looked at was um, the H in Hopkins. And I noticed that there was a virtually identical H uh, in the letter signed Linda, uh, dated uh, May 1st, 03. And uh, what is identical is the fact that the loop in the, within the two downstrokes of the H, on the left and on the right, slants down. But the overall appearance of the H is slanted to the right, exactly as in both the question and the known writing. But then my attention was drawn from the H to the, to the O, immediately following that H, uh, as in uh, the word Hopkins. And that O is written not as an O, it's actually written as a small letter A. The letter N in the word Hopkins, it's a very tight and small N. That's in the question signature, um, or the question address on the envelope. And in the known writing of uh, May 1st, 03, signed uh, at the bottom of it by Linda, she also uses a very close, tight, small N, which is identical to those Ns which are used not only in the word Hopkins, which, which are also used um, in other places in the address. The numeral two uh, in, the, in the zip code um, is also virtually identical to the numeral two at the, uh, on the date of the letter uh, dated October 2nd, 1992. And what does that tell you? That story? tells me that, that it was written by the same person. I think there's a, a large enough sample to indicate that it was written, they were both written, uh, by the known, the known writing written by Linda Nup. And I believe that therefore, and subsequently to my examination, she, is, she was the writer or the author of the writing on the envelope. 